Creepy Cutie Crafty. Hello and welcome again to Creepy Cutie Crafty. Welcome again to yet another crafting video with me, Mum. Hello and welcome again to another Sashiko crafting video. The Sashiko videos seem to be quite popular with you guys. I do find them interesting. I'm not going to do them all the time because I like to change things up so I don't get bored. I am going to have another go at a Sashiko image and in a few weeks time I'm also going to have a go at doing some embroidery using a hoop and coloured threads or floss as some people call it. But today I am going to be having another go at Sashiko. Anybody who tuned in last week or possibly the week before, depending on how soon I managed to get this one edited, would have seen me create this. This is almost like a sampler using various different Sashiko patterns. It's not perfect, but I think it's pretty good and I think it's really quite effective and it's very, very stiff. This week I'm going to go back to what I did before, which is an image in Sashiko or Sashiko thread. And that image is going to be something that I think can be quite effective in Sashiko. Sashiko. And you'll see it up on the screen right now. Yep, that's right. It is a rendition, <laughs> um, an interpretation of Van Gogh's Starry Nights painting. It's quite interesting, actually. The story of Van Gogh, especially his paintings and his work and his attitude to painting, is very interesting. It's worth looking up. How do you guys pronounce his name? Vincent Van Gogh is kind of what I grew up knowing. I know that in America he's called Van Gogh, and apparently, according to QI, the original pronunciation is is actually Van Gogh. You can correct me on that one. My pronunciation is basically purely what I've heard. From what I understand, one of the reasons why he didn't sign his paintings Van Gogh is because of people's inability to be able to pronounce his last name. So that's why on his paintings you'll see them signed Vincent rather than his full name very interesting. But I do love the way that his artwork is created. I love the how in certain images it's very, very smooth, but in other images, such as this self-portrait and Starry Night, you can make out very, very clear brush strokes. I think his work is absolutely amazing. Very, very expressive. Very, very personal to him. Amazing use of colour. Even in the darker early works that he created, the colour is incredible. And just the artist's artist, I guess you'd call him. Obviously, his paintings have been some of the most valuable Valuable, selling for several millions of pounds and just breathtaking. Anyway, that's enough gushing from me. I'm going to get on with this. So what I'm going to attempt to do is once again use a piece of old jeans fabric like what I have here and create the image on this one. Now, if you saw my last video, you'll know that the piece of fabric that I put the sampler on was slightly stretchy. This is not stretchy at all. And I found that that stretchiness created a little bit of distortion and I understand and from watching other people's embroidery videos on YouTube that that stretchiness is a bad idea. I completely understand that now. I'm not a natural seamstress, but I am enjoying doing these images using Sashiko and the near future, as I say, doing in embroidery. Let's see how we go. Okay then, so I have some old denim from a pair of trousers that my husband has discarded. Last time when I did the sampler, I had a seam in the middle of it. I'm not entirely sure whether or not I should keep the seam this time. I'm thinking that if I have it in this orientation, just cut off the top there, cut off the bottom there and work in the centre here. That could be good enough. The other thing to consider is when I was doing the sashiko last week, one of the issues that I faced was when you had multiple layers of fabric to go through, especially on a seam like this, you had to use a lot more more force to get the needle through. So I wound up having to do single stitches rather than a row of running stitches, which is more traditional with Sashiko. I have my palm thimble, the palm thimble that I'm going to use on my hand to help press the needle through. But when it comes to the seam, I may have to use single stitches rather than multiple stitches. Such is life. Anyway, I'm going to cut this down to size. I'm going to be very, very rough and ready with this one. As I say, I'm not going to be doing a literal interpretation of Starry Night. I'm going to have a go at doing my interpretation of it. I'm going to try and keep it in the spirit of the original piece but don't come at me saying it's <laughs> not exactly the same because I'm not intending it to be exactly the same but we'll see how we go just cut this to a more usable size and again I'm keeping all the scraps for other bits and pieces later I'm not going to trim it down to a square until I've finished as I work it is probably going to be knocked out of shape anyway by the layers of stitching. On top of this I have quite a few pieces of scrap fabric to use. This is from the inside of a pocket so you can see the inside is slightly darker and I've also got my little swatches of different cotton fabrics here. If you look at the image, I'll put it on the screen again now, you'll see that at the top you've got the starry sky, the main focus on, of the image. That's the area that I'm going to start with. This is a bit too pale. 
So I'm gonna add a darker layer to that one, thinking that would be quite a good one to go for. Yep, so that's quite a nice layer of that. I'm not gonna iron it. Again, it is gonna get distorted and out of shape. That is absolutely fine with me. I might not do it in just the one piece. I'm thinking of doing it piecemeal, so adding bits on a little bit at a time. Not sure how that's gonna work. I'm gonna start with this guy, see how I go. Okay, so I'm going to start putting this in place using my little flower-headed dressmaker's pins here. See how many times I can stab myself with those. Have a guess now and down in the comments, tell me how many times you think I'm going to stab myself. It's probably going to be quite a few. Right, this is the bit that's not going to make sense. I've sort of had this idea in my head of using a layer of this but swirling it and pinning it in place in a swirl so it crinkles as I stick it. We'll see how that goes. So the main swirl is going to be around about here. I'll use my fabric marking pencil just to go a little cross there so I can have something to aim for. And then there's another little swirl here. And then you've got the tree, the cypress tree going up here. So let's have a look. And I'm not going to pull it flat. I'm going to rock it up slightly. Rock it up is a technical term. Do you ever get the impression I'm just making this up as I'm going along? I really am. As I say, I've got no idea what I'm doing. I'm just having fun doing it. I've got this basically down. It's not making a whole lot of sense yet, but I hope it does by the time I've finished. I'm gonna start from the center out here and work on this swirl first, and then work on this swirl, and then I'm gonna do the other parts of the sky. You probably didn't see this last week, but off screen, I put this into a sort of loose plait. That way it won't get tangled up. So if I hold it at this end with the cut ends, and then grab a loop from this end and pull through, the rest of the skein doesn't get tangled. Okay, so. Because the layers are gonna be so thick, I can't really get more than a couple of stitches done at a time. Out, stab number one. Can you see I've taken several stickers in and out, push them as close as I can, use my palm thimble and then pull them through. And then pull the fabric back so that it spreads the stitches. For this project, I'm not keeping my stitches at an even length. You can see some are shorter, some are longer, because I want to have that sort of sporadic pattern type thing going on. Okay, I think I've done all I need to for that one. I'm not going to leave it like that. I'm going to add some more stickies to it to fill it out later. But I'm going to start on this one now so I can get that in place as well. Ow! Ow! Okay, I'm going to leave that part for now. I'm going to add a lot more stickies into this to make it a lot more dense. For now, I'm going to leave that and I'm going to come back in a bit and add the rest of the stars into the sky. I'm going to do some more of this starry sky. You can see it's starting to pucker and crease. That's what I want it to do, because I want it to have lots of texture in it. So I'm going to start adding stars. And we've also got the moon here as well. We've got one star here, here, a little star up here somewhere, here, here and another one over here. We'll see how we go. So I'm going to start with the big star down here. And 
Like I say, I'm trying to do variable lengths of stitch to emulate those brush strokes. see what I've done with those last two but basically on the painting some of them are very close-knit and very tight in the center some of them are much looser like these two right so that's where we are so far next thing to do is the moon what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to just mark out a sort of C shape and then fill it out from there rather than doing like an outline and filling it in because I want to have it a bit more loosey-goosey as they say I don't know why they say it but they do I'm still trying to stick to the Sashiko rules of no overlapping, no crossing. And I'm trying to do as many traditional Sashiko stitches as I can. There we go, that's the moon so far. I think that's looking pretty good so far. What do you think? I'll give you a closer look, just the... Yay! I'm going to use this darker fabric for the townscape area down here. The first bit I'm going to be doing is the hills in the background, which I believe are covered in snow, or it might just be moonlight. So I'm going to do that with this, but fill it in with stitches so there's more contrast there. This is going to be the fun part. I don't make things easy for myself, do I? the general shape of the horizon. I'm not going to snip this off. See, I've got this long area of cloth here. I'm not going to cut it off because then I can fold it and crease it and things into the shape that I want to. that bit done i'm going to do the town in this area here and then the bushes that are in this area here and of course the tree Thank you. 
use a much more organic, rounder brush strokes. So that's what I'm going to try and achieve with this area. It's looking pretty good. And now the tree. For the tree in this area here, I'm going to use a bit of this old corduroy denim because it's not quite black. This is going to be the interesting bit because it's going to be long and thin and spindly going down to a much wider base. So that's all in place there. I'm not going to do big stitches this one, just little tiny ones to hold it in place and try and get that flow going through it. This is going to be the fun part. Now I know the original image, the tree is green, but as this is so cool, I'm not going to worry about that too much. I'm just going to make it black, almost like a silhouette and lighten it up with a little bit of Sushiko thread and then see how it goes. And we are done. I will post a couple of pictures up on the screen right now and I'd love to know what you think of them down in the comments below. So what did you think of that then? I'd love to hear from you. Let me know what you think of this. If I was to do this again, I think I would plan it a little bit better because I was doing this ad hoc. I was making it up as I was going along. Let me know. Do you think it works? Do you think it doesn't work? What do you think you would have done differently? And let me know. Have you had a go at doing Sashiko yourself? And how successful did you find it? Would you do something that was more representative like this? Or you prefer me to stick to the patterns properly? I'm going to be having a break from Sashiko for a while and maybe having a go at some other fabric crafts. This project has taken me over three weeks to get finished completely it's been a labor of love but labor is the very much the operative word there <laughs> i'm a sucker for punishment really aren't i what other kinds of crafts and things would you like me to have a go at I'm going to be having a look at some crafts I'm going to be doing with squinks because we've got the summer holiday, the school summer holiday is coming up, so we're going to be working on a few tasks together. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you've got your own Sashiko projects or other projects to share with me, come and find me on Instagram or Facebook. The links for both are down in the description below. And whilst you're down there commenting, please remember to like and subscribe and Ding that little notification bell so you get notified of all of my upcoming videos and you don't lose me on the internet. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks very much for watching and bye bye!